Okay, this is Vonda Evans live from Quarantine. Today I want to talk to you on 910 Superstation. Fair, are you there? Okay. Okay, great. We want to talk about the stimulus money. For a lot of you know that the money is coming from the government because of the coronavirus. And what I'm going to do is run through it uh, very uh, fast. And then what we'll be able to do, hopefully, is to take some callers. I, now, I'm rigging this all up myself, but before I even start the show, uh, I want to dedicate this show to all of the families who have lost somebody as a result of this coronavirus. Uh, it is absolutely horrendous. Um, I can't tell you how many people I know through social media uh, who I know personally have suffered a loss. And uh, all I can say is one thing is that, you know, we got to keep hope alive, but we got to stay out them streets, y'all. We got to stay out those streets because that's the only way that we're going to reduce the curve. Uh, but let me talk to you about the, this money. It's $2 trillion, which is a whole lot of money. And most adults will get $1,200, <coughs> excuse me, although some will get less. For every qualifying child 16 years or under, you get $500. So what that means is that if you make $75,000 or less, then you qualify for the $1,200. Married couples with no children earning $100,000 or less will get $2,400. Now, any taxpayer filing as head of the household would get the fullest amount if they earn $112,500 or less. So what we have, $75,000 uh, for a uh, individual. Uh, for a family of two, uh, husband and wife, that's $150,000. And if you are the head of the household, they'll give you a little leeway and take it up to $112,500. Um, what happens is, is that anything above that, say for instance you make $76,000, uh, then it is reduced uh, by $100 for every thousand. So you, instead of getting $1,200, you would get $1,100, okay? And it's anything over that $75,000. For single, anything over that hundred and fifty thousand, if you're married, and anything over the hundred and twelve thousand five hundred dollars, um, it's decreased by a hundred dollars for every thousand that you over. Uh, so here's the situation. Um, you know, hey, I, you know, somebody making, you know, more than that, they just out the game, head of the household or not. Now, what if I have college children? Can my college children now apply? No. If they were a dependent on your uh, taxes last year, uh, then the they will not be eligible to get that $1,200. So if you claim them on your tax return, you cannot do it. That's just how it is. What income will they use to determine? They will use 2019 if you filed or 2018. Uh, if you haven't prepared a tax return yet, you can use your 2018 return. If you haven't filed that yet, you can use a 2019 Social Security statement showing your income uh, and your employer and anything that was reported to the IRS. Uh, what you have to do is once you, and this is a tricky part, if you moved since you filed, you have to let them know what your address is. Because what they'll do is if they don't have your banking information, they're going to send it to your last residence. So make sure you contact the IRS to let them know, listen, uh, I'm taxpayer Vonda uh, in 2018. I lived here. I now live here. This is my banking information so that the money can be direct deposited. Um, when do they expect this money to be sent out? After April 17th. Around April 17th, you'll start to receive your money. Uh, but make sure, and I don't care, listen, I had to call the IRS, the wait time was three hours. They have your new address 
and or a banking and routing number. You want that information because you go to bed on April 17th broke and on April 18th you have some money, but you have to let them know ahead of time. Uh, what if I haven't filed my taxes yet? Will that affect my ability to receive a my payment? Uh, if What you need to do is this. You go to the IRS website under coronavirus information page and it's something very, very simple. You just fill out a form. And included among those are many low income taxpayers, which they're indicating as anybody that make less than 75,000, veterans and individuals with disabilities. Now, those people, those veterans, uh, the low income taxpayers, or people with disabilities, they'll automatically get their money. Uh, that will, that's just an automatic direct deposit because they already have their information. But again, if you're in that category, if you're a veteran, if you're a low income or in a person with individual disabilities and you've moved since 2018, you got to let the IRS know. Now, is this income? Absolutely not. It is not considered income. So when you file for next year, uh, it will not uh, be reflected as income that you have received. So a family, uh, say for instance, I'm, I'm, I'm a single mom. And I have two children, and uh, they're under the age of 16, and I make less than 75000 I'm going to get $1,200 plus I'm going to get $500 for each child. That does not affect your uh, refund that you will get from the IRS for being the head of the household. This is just for uh, coronavirus relief, so it didn't have anything to do with that. Um, Okay, who is eligible? People who are receiving Social Security retirement and disability payments each month, people who are unemployed as a result, veterans and U.S. citizens who are living abroad that get a payment. As long as they meet the income requirements and have a Social Security number. Now, what are those income requirements? Let's talk about $75,000 or less adjusted income. $150,000 if you're married, and head of the household if it's $112,000 or less, $500 per child. So if you are a U.S. citizen uh, and you are not working and you're affected, you're able to get uh, this relief. Uh, how will you be notified? You will get a paper notice in the mail no later than a few weeks after your payment has been dispersed. So ideally, they're saying uh, April 17th, I'm not of the mind to believe that that's going to occur, but what will happen is you'll get a notice in the mail. That's why it is imperative to let them know if your address has a change, because if you don't, you'll have no way of being noticed. That notice will contain information about where the payment ended up and what form it was made out to. Uh, be it direct deposit or whether or not it was mailed to you in a check form. So that, that's going to be important. Uh, if you couldn't locate that payment at the time, it would be time, you need to contact the IRS. Uh, as I indicated, you don't have to pay money. Now let's talk a little bit about who is impacted. And I hope that you're able to see this because I can't, I don't have my camera up in front of me. But um, could you? So anyway, okay. If you're unemployed or partly unemployed workers who can't work due to a coronavirus-related reason, who is that? If you're unemployed or partly unemployed workers who can't work due to a corona-related reason, okay. Uh, if you if you have or had the coronavirus, uh, or the business that you worked for has been financially affected due to the shutdown, you're, you are eligible. Uh, my employer shut down my workplace because of the coronavirus. Am I eligible? As I said, if you're unemployed, partly unemployed, 
or unable to work because your employer closed down, you're covered under this bill. Now, who, what about part-time workers? Now, at Vonda's Law, I have a 1099 worker who works part-time. Will that person be eligible? Well, each state determines the eligibility for uh, what you can receive. Some states say if you try time, you cannot receive any. You still are eligible for the stimulus money. And we'll get to that in a little bit. You still are eligible. Uh, however, you will not, may or may not be eligible for the state portion, okay? Depending on how the state classifies that. So, if you rely on a school or a daycare or another care facility to care for your child, say your day daycare is closed and you have smaller children and you cannot go uh, to work, then you get the money. Well, what about if the school is closed? You know, I can't, you know, you get the money. What if you are providing for an elderly person in your home? a nursing home or day services that took care of your mom or your grandmother and you know, your dad and they lived with you, you're covered. What about people who must self-quarantine? You're covered. But the problem, the, the, the catch to all of this is that the daycare center, which we know now in the schools, have to be closed down because of a coronavirus reason. So if they shut down, and your daycare is not open anymore, which I don't believe any of them are. And it, for the exception of those daycares who are considered essential services, if they provide services for workers who are affected by the coronavirus. So if your daycare for some reason is closed down or the school is, then you're eligible for that. What do we know about in Detroit? Well, in Detroit, and well in Michigan, the school system has ended. So as a result, you work for Vonda's Law. Uh, you have to be there from nine to five o'clock. Uh, you can't work there no more because you got two little kids at home, me and man. And so as a result of you having to be required to take care of me and man because of the uh, school year uh, has ended, you know, say me and man are six or seven years old. They can't go to school. So guess what? You can get these benefits. Uh, people who have to self-quarantine are covered. Now, the legislation also says that individuals who are unable to get work because of a quarantine imposed as a result of the outbreak. Uh, what about this? I was about to start a new job now and I can't get it. Absolutely, you're covered. Uh, I was about to start working at McDonald's and, and my start date was going to be April 1st. Well, I can't work now because they're closed down. You know, what happens? Or I was gonna work for Vonda's Law and Vonda's Law is closed down. So what can I do? You would be covered. Uh, you will also be covered if you were immediately laid off from a new job and did not have sufficient work history to qualify for benefits under normal circumstances. Normally, you have to work at least 90, 60, uh, 90 to six months before you would even be eligible, and sometimes a year. Those requirements now are relaxed. So, when this occurred, you worked for Vonda's Law for 30 days. Traditionally, you would not be eligible for any state benefit because I closed down March 1st and I couldn't afford to play you. And as a result, you have not had the sufficient work history to get unemployment. Will you still be covered? Absolutely. Uh, because of this pandemic that occurred, uh, those requirements are relaxed. So what happens is you get a state check. That still stays the same and you get a federal stimulus check, okay? And in most times, they are combined and they'll go out weekly. If you received a diagnosis, you're covered. 
you are experiencing symptoms or seeking a diagnosis and you're unemployed, partly employed, or cannot work as a result. The same goes if you have to care for a member of your family or household who has received a diagnosis. Now, let me explain something to you all, okay? And this is very, very important. Uh, the language that you state when you are stating this to the federal government, it says, I certify that everything that I've seen is true. If they find out that you did not have a diagnosis, uh, or you when you say experiencing symptoms, well, I just stayed at home, I ain't tell no doctor, uh, you gonna have a problem because just as the government giveth, the government will take it away. And they ain't gonna just take back them benefits. They're gonna charge people federal. Okay? I do not want an influx of business to federally because people are taking advantage of this. So you got to be very careful. You know, I had a comment earlier. People said, oh, we know about all the benefit coverages for individuals. What about businesses? And I'm going to get to that in a minute. If you are an individual and you don't follow one of these steps and you, at the end of your application, says that, you know, I swear that everything that I put in here is true and they find out it's not, you going to prison. They're going to charge you federally. They're not messing around with this money. So that is why it's so important to understand what you are eligible for, what you are not eligible for, and any statements that you make on that application because they can be used against you. Okay, so it's very important. Normally, when we're talking about people who are experiencing symptoms, uh, make sure that you go where? to your doctor. It has to be documented. So if the symptoms would be high fever, coughing, uh, shortness of breath, make sure that you go to your doctor and don't say, well, uh, I was experiencing it, but I didn't tell nobody and I just got over by myself. That's not going to work. Okay? And it may happen. In many cases, what do we hear the medical community say? Don't go to the hospital. But these individuals that choose not to get treatment, and it's not medically documented, can run into some very serious difficulties if you're trying to get that money. And uh, if you're trying to get that money and you make something, you make a statement that, that is not correct, okay? So my recommendation would be if I can you we, if I were experiencing some of those symptoms and I was going to try to get some of this relief money, I definitely and I would encourage all my viewers and all my listeners, please go to the doctor. Please go to the doctor to make sure that this is documented with a doctor, a care provider that indicates uh, if it's not your doctor, make sure that it's documented with a, a clinic or something that you can be able to say, listen, uh, I went to A, B, and C outpatient clinic and uh, I wrote down this particular day. Uh, I told the doctor whatever I was experiencing and I related it to him uh, or her. And I don't want to say that all doctors is just ladies. Uh, but that you are experiencing symptoms or seeking a diagnosis and you're unemployed or partly employed and cannot work as a result. So you're seeking a diagnosis. I'm not feeling well. I got these symptoms and Vonda's law is closed down. Then you're eligible. Okay. Now, what this is one of the things people want to know. What if I am self-employed? So, yes. Gotta go. This has been Vonda Law Unplugged, 910 Superstation. We'll be right back. I gotta go to a break. <laughs>